the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. If you go to Mexico City today, you will find a huge concrete jungle the largest city in North America. But 500 years ago, it was a rather small village on an island in the middle of a swamp. The swamp was perhaps three feet of mud or muck, and then two feet of water, kind of similar to the Everglades. It was surrounded by mountains that held the swamp together. And because of that swamp, that city, Mexico City, was well protected because nobody could really find their way through the swamp. But in 1520, Hernando Cortes, the conquistador, heard that there was a lot of gold there, that the mountains that surrounded the swamp had a lot of gold and that the Aztecs had mined that gold. And he was determined to get some of that gold. So he brought his men in, they conquered the city, but they soon found that the people were so resentful of their oppression that Cortes decided it's not worth the, the land, the swamp is not worth anything, it's the gold. So he put some of that gold on a barge and he told his men they could take as much gold as they wanted in backpacks, but he warned them that getting through the swamp would be difficult if they had too much gold on their backs. And there's a famous quote, he travels safest who travels lightest. He didn't want them to weigh themselves down too much. But of course, that was a hard temptation to resist. Many of them wanted as much gold as they could carry. And as they waded into that swamp once again, because of the extra weight on their backs, they started to sink into the swamp. Some of them sank to the point where they couldn't really see above the reeds that were growing in the swamp and began to wander aimlessly. And even if they could see where they were going, because of the fact that their feet were beginning to sink into the mud and muck, it was more and more difficult to move easily. Many of those men died from exhaustion and overexposure to the elements. Other men died more quickly. They had so much gold on their backs that they sank so deeply into the muck that their heads were below the level of the water and they drowned. The historian Edward Richardson says that the tragedy for those men was that if they only had let go of the gold, they would have survived. But the fact is that more men died on the way out of that conquest than died on the way in, in battle. They died because they could not let go of the gold. They prized what was on their backs more than their lives. In a sense, that perhaps gives us an understanding of what Jesus is saying to the apostles. The mission is urgent. Go out and say the kingdom of God is at hand. Cure the sick as a proof to them that God is present. Be single-minded in your purpose. The mission is urgent. Don't carry a whole lot of stuff with you that's going to distract you or slow you down. It's ironic that the word traveling bag or suitcase that we have in today's gospel in the Latin Vulgate Bible is impedimenta, from which we get the word impediment. Don't be slowed down by stuff you're carrying because you'll never be able to get the job done. Like those conquistadors, your head will fall below the reeds. You won't see where you're going. You'll wander aimlessly or you'll drown in having all of that stuff 
all of those impediments that keep you from fulfilling the mission that God has given you. We too have a mission. Each and every one of us has a purpose. And that stuff, those impediments can get in the way in two ways. Actually, perhaps in three ways. First of all, if we rely too much on our stuff, then we stop relying on God. All the possessions that we have insulate us from our vulnerabilities. They make us feel invincible. They make us feel like we can do all on our own, that we really don't need God's help because all of the aids that we have, the, the gadgets and gizmos and the financial reports make us feel safe and secure. But also, those things can take so much of our energy and attention that we lose track of what's truly important in life. I remember a couple of years ago, there was a woman in our parish who had a family reunion at Christmas time. Her children, or rather her grandchildren, were in North America, Europe, and Asia. So it was unusual to get all of them under one roof. And she rented a van to travel around Florida to see the sights. And she was amazed that while all of these kids were in this big van, they were all on their iPhones, texting people. This was one of the few times that they had a chance to see their cousins. But they were so attached to that iPhone that they couldn't put it down and just talk. She was telling me this because she was amazed to find out that the people they were texting were other people in the van. But it was just that the gizmo was so necessary for them, they had become so habituated to it that they couldn't just put it down and talk. Instead of helping them, now it was getting in the way. All the things that we possess can also get in the way of our, recognize, our recognition of the fact that we are all in this together. Sometimes all the things that we own can create an artificial distance between the haves and the have-nots. They insulate us, they put us into a bubble that makes us think that we are very, very different from everyone who doesn't have the things we have. But frankly, we are all God's children. And St. Basil, in a very challenging homily, perhaps said it best in the fourth century. The bread that you're too full to eat, the clothes in your closet that you haven't worn for years, the money that you buried in the ground and forgot all of these things don't belong to you. They belong to God, and God wishes that they belong to the poor. So let us pray that we will never let the things that we own get in the way of us seeing our need for God, our mission in life to be clear-headed and move forward, and our commonality with those who perhaps don't have all of those impediments, all those things that we prize so well.